Hi, Pastor Rick. Welcome back to another episode of Living by the Book. Thank you. Uh, I've got another question for you today, a question that was sent in by someone in the congregation. Okay. Uh, again, congregation, we are always happy to receive questions. Uh, I do my best to come up with questions, but eventually I do run out. And we've been doing this for a while, so don't ever be afraid. Not that you know everything. You just no, don't know what other people want to hear. That's the problem. I don't even know. Well, I don't even know what I don't know. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know to ask. That's the issue. It's definitely well, not you, I know it. I you, just... you, you, you've hit the bottom of the well with me, too. I'm just making <laughs> stuff up. <laughs> well, that's good. So continue watching. I'm sure this yeah, is right. cool. <laughs> uh, no, the question is, so, you know, there's that uh, there's that scene in, in near the end of Revelation in which uh, the new heavens and the new earth are being described. And uh, we're told that, that, you know, at that moment... Uh, you know, God will wipe away every tear from her eye. Mm -hmm. There's no more suffering, no more pain. It's just, well, be, you know, he'll, he'll wipe away every tear from her eye. So the question we received was, well, what about like tears of joy? You know, it makes sense that because there's no more pain and suffering, there wouldn't be any, any sad tears. But, you know, what about tears of joy? Is it, is it like literally there will be no crying in heaven? Or is it, is, you know, is that, is that passage alluding to something else? I think is the question. So what, how do you, how do you understand that little reference there? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, uh, clearly the context of what that's referring to in, in Revelation 21 is a reference to no more sorrow, no more tears, no mm -hmm. more pain, no right. more suffering. 21, I think that's, uh, what is it, verse 4, yeah. yeah. Um, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no longer any death, mourning, crying, pain, for the first things have passed away. So the context is all that which is sin-related, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. So the consequences of sin are going yeah. to be removed, and yeah. the weeping or the crying uh, is the consequence of sin. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, even Jesus weeping at Lazarus' tomb was, you know, which was my favorite Bible verse when I was a kid because mm -hmm. you know Jesus swept yep, easiest uh, one to memorize John eleven thirty five yep. oh, Jesus swept yeah Nailed not it. understanding that rejoice every more First Thessalonians five is actually right. shorter in Greek but uh, anyway uh, uh, in English Jesus yeah. swept is yeah, shorter yeah. Um, but even that was the consequence of sin not his sin but the consequences of sin mm -hmm. is what likely brought Jesus to weep yeah. Yeah. For those right. who are so devastated by sin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's he knows what, what he's about to do. Right. Yeah. And so that that is all um, um, even associated with sin. Now, the scriptures do talk about that there's rejoicing in heaven when one sinner mm -hmm. repents. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So there's yeah. great joy. Yeah. Um, and the scriptures refer to um, the idea of joy inexpressible. Mm -hmm. um, that we have in First Peter one eight, it talks about. It says, "And though you have not seen him, you love him; and though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls." So that idea of joy inexpressible. Of course, we're in a fallen state, and perhaps mm -hmm. the inexpressibility of our joy is because right. we are in a fallen state, right? But there's an implication there, uh, an inference, if you will, that sometimes joy is so, so intense mm -hmm. that you don't have the ability to adequately express it yeah. verbally. Yeah. And so you might express it physically in some way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I got caught one time when I was a teenager mm -hmm. listening to the World Series during a Sunday night service. <laughs> uh, the, the game was on. I had a transistor radio with an earpiece, and I was trying to be covert. But then there was a home run, and I went like this. And uh, that gesture alerted my father that I was <laughs> engaged in something other than worship <laughs> or worshiping the right thing. Right, right. And uh, he called me out right in the sermon that I needed to stop. Turn off my radio. Yeah. And he, he called you out from the pulpit? Yes. During his sermon with um, about 600 people there. Wow. You know, and I'm going, oh, my. Okay. That's embarrassing. Yeah, okay. it was. Okay. It was 
oh. probably embarrassing. But <laughs> the idea was, it was joy. You just stop listening to basketball games on Sunday nights. Yeah, all right. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Kidding. Yeah, right. kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, that was the expression of joy yeah, as yeah. that home run. Yeah. Um, when little George gets really excited, he yeah. goes, like, he goes, Ee! Yeah. And he just like shakes. He can't yeah. control it. It's right. awesome. I just wonder whether in heaven there's going to be that, yeah, that overwhelming right. sense of joy and delight yeah. and worship of the Lord that could result in tears. Yeah, I yeah. don't think it's out of the question. Yeah, I think that the wiping away every tear is in the context of the consequence right. of sin. Right, because he mentions the pain, right, the sorrow, death, right, suffering. That's yeah. the context. Yeah. And there are other verses like yeah. Psalm thirty. Uh, gives to us uh, in verse 5, it, it says, um, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, mm -hmm. but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. So the weeping, that is the consequence of sin, lasts for the night, but in the morning comes the joy. Right. Right. So there is that, that contrast between weeping and as the consequence of sin and joy yeah, yeah. in the morning. Now, it doesn't say how the joy, or a shout of joy, I guess mm -hmm. it is. Uh, how, it manifests, yeah, yeah. how it manifests. How it manifests itself. But, you know, obviously. And then in, in Psalm 126, verse 5, a similar idea is produced. Psalm 126. Get through 119 here. <laughs> I know. Ah. Uh, those who sow in tears shall reap with shout, uh, joyful shouting. Um, he who goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. It would seem that if there's weeping, that would be a result of sorrow. Mm -hmm. Then the opposing antithesis, yeah. if you will, yeah. would be the potential for weeping for joyful mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it, it's consistently associated with a shout yeah. of joy, yeah, um, and not just the idea of weeping. And then Isaiah uh, twenty-five in verse eight says, "He will swallow up death for all time, and the Lord God will wipe mm -hmm. tears away from all faces." And he will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Mm. And that verse is quoted in Revelation yeah. 7. Right. Um, again. Verse 17. Go ahead and read it if you get there. Uh, for the lamb, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So there's that association with the the tears and the weeping, mm -hmm. with the distance from God, the consequences of sin, and mm -hmm. the presence of God brings joy. Mm -hmm. Whether or not there could be tears of joy is an open question. Sure, it doesn't say there are. Yeah. But I think that the elimination of tears has as its foci mm -hmm. the consequences yeah. of sin that's going to be removed. Right. The, the tears and weeping are symbolic of right. the effects of sin. Now, I think that there is going to be tears prior to the eternal state. Yeah. All of these things yeah. about wiping away right. tears are right. in anticipation of Revelation 21. Right. right. Where he wipes away all their tears. Right. And it's after three things. First, it's after the judgment seat of Christ, mm -hmm. right? where I think there is likely going to be weeping mm -hmm. because of the exposing of missed opportunity, right. shame right. for repetitive indulgence in sin, right. and other things. Even though you're saved, right. some are going to be saved so as by fire yeah. without much reward because yeah. of the wasted opportunity that right. exists. Right, right. They've engaged in pursuit of wood, hay, and stubble, yeah, as opposed to gold, silver, precious stone, right? yeah. which is the yeah. things done for the glory of Christ. Right. A person who is a Christian but lives more for themselves than for Christ, mm -hmm. I think, will weep. Mm -hmm. 
uh, at the missed opportunity. Yeah. Which is why we ought to get serious about the opportunities we have right. to bring glory to Christ today. Right. right. So that we have that ability to rejoice. Yeah. Um, but those tears also will be wiped away. Mm -hmm. The second thing that's going to happen, uh, actually during the judgment seat of Christ, is going to be the uh, tribulation period. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation, there's a there's a picture of those who are under the throne, right. beseeching God to avenge them. Yeah, they're the martyrs. And yeah. the notion there is that there may be weeping for others who are suffering during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is potential that they might weep okay. also. Yeah, because but, they're crying out for yeah, justice. So right. Yeah. And I think in empathy mm -hmm. for others mm -hmm. still on the earth yeah. who are going yeah. through the tribulation yeah. Yeah, and are sure. suffering. So the empathy of those suffering would potentially be tears that God will wipe away in Revelation 21. And the third uh, event would be the great white throne judgment mm -hmm. at the end of the millennium, right? Prior to immediately prior to Revelation 21, right. where there is a uh, a weeping at the doom of people about whom we care, mm -hmm. loved ones, friends mm -hmm. that never trusted Christ mm -hmm. or that we did not ever witness to, mm -hmm. but we see their doom. Mm -hmm and they're cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. It's likely that there's going to be weeping and regret mm -hmm. at that point. But then God is going to wipe away those tears as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's the focus, the regret, yeah. Yeah, sure. the failure, the sin, the empathy with those suffering mm -hmm. are all part of that, which yeah. is being focused on in Revelation 21. Yeah. And whether or not the intensity of our joy becomes such that we weep, yeah. um, it is, it may it may well be the case that that uh, we do. Yeah. Uh, then others may argue that you know the weeping is is because and and the joy that's inexpressible is because of our finitude and depravity. Mm -hmm. But in glorification, right. we'll have that greater ability yeah. to express ourselves, right. and right. it won't have to come out our eyes. Yeah. You know, there will yeah. be the ability to be expressed. There will yeah. be no joy inexpressible. Yeah. There will only be joy expressible. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and so that would be a, a, a counter argument. Yeah. Sure. You know, to sure. to that. Yeah. But uh, you know, I don't think it's necessarily prohibited by the scriptures that say He's going to wipe away every tear. Right. Um, right. I, I think it's speculation to go beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's helpful. There's a lot to look forward to. Amen. And I do. Yep. Amen. Church, we hope this has helped you. I know that's, that's kind of a common question out there. So that's fun hearing you walk through it. So yeah. uh, church, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them in. We'd love to answer them for you. We hope that this has uh, helped you and, and even given you a reason to, to read back the revelation and just see all that we do have to look forward to. Amen. So we love you. We'll see you next time on another episode of Living by the Book. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.